What is going on guys and girls welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 as Nicosia and I've finally been able to catch up with your comments from the previous episodes and there's a couple things I've learned and a couple things I want to talk about but first off let's start with our dynasty here the Orphanotrophers family. Now this is a generic dynasty and I was thinking about uh, changing the name, but I've actually decided to leave it. Despite some cool suggestions from you guys, I've decided to just leave it because um, I'm just gonna, yeah, make this our background story. So either, actually there's basically two ways, either Count Stachorius himself was an orphan, after all we are the ones who have founded this dynasty, or, um, and possibly both, it could be a combination as well, we were the one in charge of the orphanage in Constantinople and uh, because we did that very well we were eventually tasked with um, yeah overseeing the Byzantine part of Cyprus which is obviously you know Cyprus still being ruled as a co-dominium together with the Abbasid Caliphate so uh, that's basically our background so I think this is good enough we can leave that here now, also, I found out that if we right-click on our character here, we can pin this character, we can go to our location, and we can also visit the barbershop. So let's go ahead and do that. In the very first episode, actually, we changed out of our great martial gear into, well, this. And, um, yeah, I thought, like, maybe our wife wasn't happy with what we were wearing, but um, either way, I think um, we should definitely be checking, uh, well, switching this out. And there's interesting things, prison rags. We could wear prison rags. I like that this is a possibility. We could be a crusader, northerner, but yeah, obviously there is Byzantine, hmm, I would say low nobility clothing. Okay, we already have that. What is, is this number two, what we're wearing right now? Yeah, pretty much, okay. Well, hmm, there is Byzantine armor. I think that fits our character a little bit better. And then a noble cap. Well, that looks weird. A circlet? No, this doesn't quite fit. I uh, mean, imperial crown. I like that we can just do that, but a Byzantine circlet? Um, can we even... Can we look at this guy? No, okay. Um, what else have we got? Byzantine imperial crown? A Byzantine helmet. I think, yeah, that, that just looks very cool. Now, obviously, this is armor that we only wear when we're fighting. But I just love this style. This is what we had at the very beginning. So we're going to go back to that. I'm going to leave the rest for now. We'll just apply the changes to our, um, yeah, to our uniform. And uh, now we look very much like our son. Um, I love that. But yeah, so that's only one of the things I wanted to mention. And lastly, I finally found where we see our stress. So we've got three stress levels. And you reach them at 100 stress. But right now we're at zero. So we're in a very good position. Uh, so there's nothing we really need to do about that. Okay, awesome. Now with that said, I think we can just move on forward. Now obviously, there has been uh, Jerusalem still around the kingdom. In fact, the King Callisto continues to expand. He took Mac well, actually Medina. He took Medina in the last episode and that triggered the jihads, which, which haven't actually started yet, but they could potentially. And now he's uh, advancing even further into Najd. I'm not sure if that's really smart. He's also fighting the Tilanids at uh, the same time. Um, but uh, he does have a lot of special event forces. Uh, 2,600. Those are just the Crusaders, I assume. Um, and uh, they seem to be hitting very hard. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, we have used that opportunity to go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. So it was good for us. In a way, we could uh, profit from that. Um, but we're still considered a sinner, and our piety is in the gutter. Um, and I don't think we're really going to be able to get out of that. Now, in the last episode, we were wounded by one of our companions. Uh, one we could have killed much earlier. Uh, we decided against that. And, um, well, that turned out to have been a mistake. And then we also came into some issues with our liege, the uh, Basileus. Macedon. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of issues <laughs> that we need to deal with, but for now I think uh, we need to focus on getting our wound healed up. But yeah, um, we learn of more secrets, and yeah, this is another thing I learned, is that uh, these hooks um, don't actually do much for us, because um, 
you can only really use those secrets when these people are in your court or your vassals or they are independent rulers or your liege for example like those are um, situations where you can actually make use of those hooks otherwise they're relatively useless unless and that is something I learned you have a special perk where you can demand payment in return for keeping your mouth shut but that is something that you can only do if you have a certain lifestyle focus you need to be like um, like it's, it's part of the stewardship thing let me see if I can find that actually where where it is there, there we go um, it's here um, yeah Golden obligations, you can demand payment for hooks. Now, this might actually be something we could do. Um, we might even... You know what? We could actually do that. We could just choose that. We could switch our focus. Is there something I really want from this? Not... Honestly, not really. I mean, this... I've just kind of been choosing because I had to. I like the organized march here. This is definitely giving us some benefits. Living of the land. I guess we can. I guess we can keep going on here for a little bit, but then we should probably switch on to stewardship since that is actually our biggest skill, or our highest skill, anyways. Uh, we might as well do that, um, and then we can actually go for these and make some money, which I believe would be pretty good. In fact, you know what? War, honor, loyalty are all means to an end. Gold. We gain more money. My land and the people under my care are my strength. Domain focus. I think that's something we can definitely do. You know what? I'm actually going to be switching away. Uh, let me just see how close we are to this. 255 of a thousand. You know what? I want to switch over to the domain focus for now. I would like to get the golden obligations here. As that just seems uh, like um, we're not really using the secrets that we have found. Um... Because Stefania, she's working tirelessly to find secrets, and I can't really, yeah, I can't really get anything out of that. And we do need the money um, for several several things. In fact, yeah, we can now use the money to create a second uh, men at arms regiment. We currently have light footmen, but uh, because we had we have our war stallion, um, I feel like I want to have some. I, I mean, I would have preferred heavy horsemen, um, but light horsemen is the best we can have some armored footmen would be dope as well but i think we're gonna go for those and uh, this is basically gonna be our contingent of knights that will uh follow us together with our heterier over here so yeah let's uh go for those i mean is this this is plains so yeah we actually have an advantage in cyprus most of this is plains this is mountains this is mountains well there is three, four plains and two mountain provinces. So I think it's worth it. Um, and uh, we're just, just going to do it. We're going to create this regiment. And um, yeah, we'll be paying for it with the very the very many secrets that we have found out um, so far. At least that's the plan. Okay, more factions are created. Now, interestingly, Asturias now holds lands over here. And the Byzantines are in North Africa. Spouse acting on my behalf. My, my wife spends a significant amount of, amount of time traveling the realm with her honor guard. There are many matters she can settle on my behalf. And the military presence she brings with her is a firm reminder of my right to rule. My counters and I stand ready in defense of the realm. Make sure the people grovel appropriately, my dear. No, I think this is, um, this is good enough. We'll take the prestige. Okay. Um, by the way, where is our dread? Our dread is at 20, and it grows. Oh, because we were wounded, it actually is reduced. Interesting. And, yeah, so it, actually it's, it decreases right now. Okay, now our brother-in-law... No, is this my son-in-law? It says fellow vassal, but he is married to my daughter, so he should be my son-in-law. Um, but yeah, he asks us to join his war against Mesembria, and obviously we'll have to accept. And yeah, I think, where are we? We're at the court of our, yeah, of our liege. You know what? I want to continue to do that. And we actually need to pause and raise our men. How many troops do we have? We have a lot more now. We are at the men-at-arms regiment cap. That's fine. Let's raise our armies. 
and let's see uh, that we can help out. Now, who are we fighting right now? I thought we were fighting one of those. Who is it that we're fighting precisely? Mesembria. The King of Wallachia. Oh, really? Oh, you're fighting this guy. Interesting. So, this is what you want, I see. And you hold Bogus. Hmm, okay, that makes sense. You have 600 men. You definitely need my help, it, it, it seems like. Interesting. So, yeah, we have elite quality troops. Total soldiers. And we are still reinforcing right now, but mostly our light horsemen. Okay, I think uh, that's fine. We are going to go ahead and uh, spend four gold for embarking. We've got enough for that. And then we'll make our way over to support our ally. Okay, I think we're going to land here. And then we'll walk the rest. Seems like the best course of action. I guess we can also land here. Why not? Now he has uh, got a head start, but I think we're relatively fast. Okay, is these our enemies? Yeah. So he seems to be walking around the Aegean Islands, but in the meantime, we're over here. Dying! No! Man, just on campaign. That is very unfortunate. Count Stachoricus of Nicosia's soul has finally been cast to hell. Okay, well, we are a sinner. At age 59 years of... At 59 years of age, there we go. He died from his wounds. A known murderer, which is not true, he will turn for his unspeakable crimes in the next life. Count Bosporius ascends to the throne, a pious and humble man. <laughs> Many fear that Bosporius may have been better suited for church rather than the throne. Okay, we shall continue. But now we need to pause for a second. Uh, we have joined this war. And um, we need to quickly check out our ruler. Um, so did we just... Uh, we no longer have any secrets at all. Damn it, that is very unfortunate. Okay, well anyways, we are a zealous man. So that makes it very different from our father who was considered a sinner. And I think uh, it's going to be pretty useful. Yeah, we do not have any prestige. Now we married very, very low. Um, in fact, yeah, our wife is a lowborn, um, so that wasn't very good. We're a humble man, though, so this is fine, and we are trusting. We're also a stutterer, and we are a murderer. We killed a commoner during a hunt, if you remember, which is funny because our wife is probably a much better hunter than we are. Um, she's, she's probably very upset with us about that, but anyway, um, yeah, we are a stutterer. Yeah, we have had a martial education, and we turned out to be relatively good. Also, our stewardship is not bad at all, but the rest of our skills are relatively bad. Um, so I think the first course of action here will be to work on our prestige, and we'll also obviously have to choose a focus. But I do want to check out my son, Kamitas, as well, um, who so far is deceitful, rowdy, and just. He is getting a intrigue education from his mother, I think. My wife and friend. Okay, so let's quickly check that out. So my mother is my friend and my wife is my friend. That's awesome. Okay, we have uh, female friends. Nice. I, I wonder if we can ever get rid of the murderer thing. But uh, for now, let's choose a lifestyle. So, we have the martial thing that we can go for, and we have already gotten loyalty and respect. Okay, so we've basically followed our father's footsteps here. Mm hmm, let me quickly check our character again. We are humble, zealous, and trusting. Yeah, okay. I think we will probably finish the... Uh, the gallant one as well, just like our father, but then I might switch off to something else. We'll have to see. I wonder if we've inherited our father's um, war stallion, because we spent quite a lot of money on that one. Anyway, um, so yeah, we are in this war, and what is this? An empty council position. Right, we once, yeah, we were actually the marshal, and so now we need to assign someone else. We can go with Justianos. 
Now, we also shouldn't forget that one of our... Joseph, he basically killed our father. Uh, so that's something to consider. But yeah, I think we'll assign you, Justianos. That's the legendary blade master. There we go. So let's quickly check out my court here. We do need a court physician. Do I really not have anybody I can appoint? That seems so strange. Can I not appoint you? I can. I can appoint my mother. Oh, well, this is actually my wife. Never mind. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Um, let me quickly see if my mother would be a suitable court physician. Not really. How about you, Photheus? You're not an amazing either. Anybody who's skilled at learning? Not particularly. So I guess we'll just have to find someone because they would have potentially helped with the wounds. Uh, start the search, and then we'll leave it at that for now. We're losing money at the moment. But that's also because we're at war. Okay, so we've uh, arrived. And we do not have a commander. I guess we're going to be leading this ourselves. Do we have 30 marshal? Wait, hold on, what? Commander advantage, 30. Okay. Alright, this is just our advantage, not just our martial skill. It does play into that, however. Okay, so there's two court physicians. We could go for her, but we'll have to pay 50 gold. Him will have to pay 15. She's sadistic, craven, trusting, and a military engineer, brilliant strategist as well. Or we have Christophorus. A Midas touched, a content and craven. They're also sadistic. Why are there so many sadists in the world? Hmm. I guess um he seems enthusiastic. He's sadistic. Do I want to have a sadistic physician? Honestly, I don't think so. They both fail to impress me, to be uh, quite honest here. Yeah. But yeah, another secret has been exposed. Louis! The son and heir of Emperor Louis of Francia has accused my sister of having an extramarital affair with Hugo. How could she defile the sanctity of her marriage? Oh no, this is not good. My sister. These accusations are not but malice and lies. Um, Louis Gladius Christie. Is that his name? Oh, that's... What? That's his family name, Gladius Christi? Honor through the sword. Okay, I mean, I guess that makes sense. And is he the emperor? No, he's the heir. He's the heir still. And you are having an affair, he says. Prince, the, the Bishop of Corsica. 60-year-old man, really? Why are you... I just don't get it. What does this guy have to offer to you? You're... You're married to the heir to an empire. Why? Why would you go to bed with an ill 60-year-old bishop? Like, this doesn't even make sense. I think that this is just malice because it just doesn't... Like, it doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I just can't believe that, honestly. So, um, yeah. We'll go for that. Because none of this makes sense. And now, what? I'm a sinner? My sister Alexei has been showing the signs of pregnancy. Everyone thought that her husband was the father and has become clear. Okay, so because I protected my sister, we are now considered sinners. Oh, this is terrible. So maybe this isn't particularly because of my actions, but because of the actions of my sister. Is that possible? But yeah, that certainly sucks. It certainly sucks. Because we are a zealous man. We have religious conviction. I just didn't believe it. Would, my sister would do that. Um, it just wouldn't make sense. But yeah, we learned of more secrets here. Very good. Another lover. She's 60 years old. And this guy is 17. A Varangian. <laughs> Why would you do this? This seems so weird. I mean, I guess she's a genius. But she's got lover's pox. And she's lunatic. Why would you even... 
Why would you ever consider that? Um, but yeah, she's got enough money. Who even is she? She's some courtier with 200 gold. That's insane. Um, I definitely want her to pay me. And now we no longer have any prestige? Why that? Why is that? I don't know why we lost prestige, to be quite honest. Uh, but I think I'm actually going to go for the Valachian capital. We might be able to capture someone. Or has our province been taken? No, it hasn't. Okay. We are losing money right now. As we are having to pay some money for our soldiers. And King Gavril of Servia is now at war with our ruler. Kagan Arpad. Has joined. Oh, Kasaria is in the war. Supporting Valachia. And Chalcedon. Wait, so. Who is part of this war? The Prince of Yedisan and the Kagan of Kasaria. Okay. Need to be careful that we're not being attacked. This is the army of Vidin. We have. Gotten some money from uh, occupying the province. And I guess I'm just going to have to run away from these 744 men. I mean, I guess I could also just go into the sea. Unfortunately, we didn't actually capture anybody. But Valachia seems to be very busy fighting Bulgaria right now. Um... All right. Well, that was definitely an interesting turn of events. Unfortunately, um, yeah, we died very quickly here. I was hoping we had a little bit more time left as Stokorius, but uh, I guess it's fine for now. Um, yeah, we have uh, actually been successful in a war here, even though it's not our own. But still, we didn't entirely get our army destroyed, which I call a success. And actually, can we go ahead and negotiate an alliance again? You don't want that, interestingly. Huh. Well, you're at war. So if you were not at war, which, by the way, I'm helping you with, but anyway, um, we would be fine. Uh, he will probably join us again. Awesome. And you do not have a whole lot of piety either. <laughs> okay. Uh, luckily, we're getting quite some piety back because of uh, our zealousness here. Um, anyway, as I said, that was the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.